service. We're going to turn to page 380. And as we say, it will say all four verses. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax, and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant's ships. Don't you like that, wives? <laughs> she bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is at night, and giveth meat for her household. She considereth a field, and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands, she planteth it. She planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength, and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hand holdeth the staff. She stretcheth it. Out her hand to the poor, yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with straw. 
She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. She maketh fine linen and selleth it, and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and her tongue is a law of kindness. Her children arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. May God bless the reading of his word. You may be seated. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we lift up our eyes unto you with grateful praise. For you are our help, the one who has created the heavens and the earth. Lord, there is no one more powerful than you. There is no one kinder, more loving than you. We praise you, Father. We praise you, Lord Jesus. We praise the Holy Spirit. We thank you for your, your love and watch care over us. We praise you for your word, Lord. And as we look at the word of God today, we will see in there, uh, Father, the, the manifold wisdom of God is revealed, really, in many ways in motherhood. Lord, we are here today to honor all moms, whether they have already passed or whether, whether they are with us today. Father, we are so grateful for the beauty and for the provision of our moms. And the, and the care that they had of our lives. We know, Lord, because we're all fallen, that, that there is no mom that is perfect. But yet, Lord, there is so much that we have learned to be thankful for because of our moms. Lord, we thank you for Eve, who is the mother of all living. We thank you, Lord, that your word calls us to honor our fathers and our mothers. Lord, may we be faithful in doing that. Whether we're adults or whether we're children, we need to honor our parents, honor our father and mother. And Lord, I think about when you were on the cross and bearing our guilt, our shame, our transgressions upon that cross, you provided for your mother. Lord, we thank you for moms. We thank you for this time that we in this nation celebrate motherhood. In all of these things, Lord, may you be glorified and lifted up. We thank you, Lord, that, that we have uh, baptisms today. As we baptize Diana and Brianna and Elijah, Lord, I pray that this baptism that they will share in today and their obedience and, and faithfulness to you, Lord, that this will have a, a, a memorable effect and a, an encouragement for them to continue to walk with you and grow in your grace. I thank you, Lord, that in prayer we can lift up uh, Pat before you for the passing of Charlie and all that's been on her plate this week, Lord, that you would uphold her and encourage her. We want to remember Kathy and Gordon before you. Father, watch your watch care over them. Every need is, a, every day is a struggle, and there's great needs every day. We want to lift up our dear sister in the Lord, Betty, who, is, uh, who has been struggling with her health. We pray, Lord, for your hand of blessing and protection upon her. We pray, Lord, that, that you would heal her. We want to lift up Dick and Sue today as they're ministering over at Ralston uh, Baptist Church and ask that you would uh, just bless them and as they are going to be heading south this coming week, that you would give them traveling mercies. And we want to remember one of the ladies in our community, uh, Helen Sisson, who is, uh, who is healing from, uh, from a kind of a freak accident. We just ask, Lord, that you would help her in her recovery. 
Now, Father, we commit this uh, service into your care and ask that you would guide and direct. And as we leave here today, know that we've been in your presence. Open our hearts and our minds to receive what you would have us to receive today. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.
your church family. Thank you for all your prayers and kind words throughout Lois's illness and passing. The comfort of your Lord's kind words and your prayers helped ease the strain of Lois's passing. Uh, since Lois loved working in her flower beds, uh, we will use a gift card to plant a flowering tree in memory of her. Love in Christ, the Marie Lincoln. And, dear missionary, ladies missionary, this is a belated thank you for the Tops uh, gift card. I used it for gas as I commute to college throughout the week. Uh, my, se uh, my semester has come to an end as it has, it has been bus a busy year between college, work, and an internship. Your thoughtfulness is much appreciated. And that's from Jared Tommy. Okay, that's like our bulletins. We'll go over some announcements this week. Tuesday, May the 11th, ladies' missionary meeting here at the church at 9.15. Thursday the 13th, adult Bible study in our senior classroom here at the church, 10.45. Uh, make sure you uh, phone to reserve if you want to go to the Otis Sega's ladies' retreat on the 15th. That's from 8 to 5. A sad event coming up. Uh, unfortunately, Kim and Larry, boy, are going to be moving. So, Next Sunday, the 16th, from 9.25 to 10.15, we are going to say goodbye to them um, with refreshments and a fellowship down in the lower uh, basement today. The 23rd, another baptismal service, praise the Lord, for Caleb, Zach, and Michael. On the 30th, it's the fifth Sunday, and we will be blessed with a, a message from Pastor Darrell. Birthdays is coming up week, the 15th, John Bodine, happy birthday to John. Uh, the 16th, Kara, the other on vacation this week, get a chance, I wish her a happy birthday when she gets back. Uh, anniversaries this week, uh, Roy Lynette Pemberton, today, that's today. And on the 14th, Howard and Noel Jacobs, so happy anniversary to both of you guys. And wow, that's all I can say is wow, praise the Lord for our offering there last week, simply Any other announcements? Oh, I see a bunch of hands. <laughs> Stephanie, you can go first. Go ahead. If you haven't gotten a chance to look at the nursery yet, it is all finished and it's looking great. Yes. And I am praying for some young families to come and fill the nursery up. <laughs> so as such, I am looking for some nursery workers. Right now, it would just be on an as-needed basis. If you see a family that has young kids that you would go over and offer. I'm hoping for at least two more people. That way, everyone only has to be in uh, once a month. Um, get to be in once a month, <laughs> but obviously we'll take as many as we can get. So if you're interested in helping in the nursery, please let me know. Thanks, Stephanie. Yes, Dad. And I just wanted to say that the library is now open, and I want to give a great big thank you and shout out to our pastor, our deacons, trustees, the whole congregation for allowing us to have some new bookshelves made. I'm so pleased with it, and I hope you all get to enjoy it. We, um, I do want to briefly say that we took some of our authors, like um, um, MacArthur, Lindahl, Lucado, some of those, we bunched them together in one section. So whether you're looking for something that we have written in fiction or in the nonfiction, that, that author is collected together in one section of the shelf, and they are marked so that hopefully you can find what you're looking for. So enjoy it, and uh, just check them out like you have in the past, find the card in the back, and pop it in the front of the box, and I'll take care of it from there. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Steph. Appreciate it. Anybody else? Yes, let me go ahead.
text today is going to be found in Psalm 32, so if you would uh, turn in your Bibles to Psalm 32. I got the idea for a Mother's Day message uh, from this psalm from uh, David Jeremiah, who mentioned uh, in his study Bible... Uh, about the, just the wonderful qualities of motherhood taken from this passage in reflection of the wonderful manifold wisdom and blessings of God. So before we get into the message, uh, just some things for the ladies that they already know about. The first one is that silence is golden. Unless you have kids then silence is suspicious. <laughs> You've all, we've all experienced that, haven't we? A mother is a person you can always call to see how long chicken can last in the fridge. <laughs> and this is from Phyllis Diller. How many of you remember Phyllis Diller? All right. She once said, I want my children to have all the things I could not afford, and then I want to move in with them. <laughs> that sounds like Phyllis Diller, and she had that wonderful laugh. So I've entitled this message, The Manifold Mom. Leave it to a man to come up with a sermon title that defines a mom uh, with the word manifold. And I want you to know, ladies, that when I talk about a manifold, I'm not talking about a, an integral part of a car engine. <laughs> because the Bible gives a wonderful description of a manifold. It describes the manifold as that which is abundant, that which is diverse. And surely that is descriptive of motherhood. God's wisdom is therefore in all abundance and, uh, and is diverse. And, and uh, so as we look at motherhood, motherhood also is abundant in love and the caring and all that, but also diverse in the many ways in which you have to, to help your children grow and to take care of them, to love them uh, through the whole process. So we want to honor moms today. Uh, with this message. So in doing so, let us look at the manifold wisdom of God through his prayer and uh, the manifold wisdom of prayer and, and taking that to God. Lord, we come to you this morning just thanking you for our moms and just ask that this, uh, this message be an encourage them, encouragement to them today. As we look at this psalm, Lord, I thought about it, and I thought, I don't really see anything here about moms, but the more I thought about how diverse and abundant you are in your care for us, there really is a picture of motherhood. So I pray that you would uh, just help us to draw some encouragement from these truths that you have given to us from this wonderful song of David. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So as we look at Psalm 32, we won't look at the whole, uh, whole part of this psalm. I'm going to focus on verses 6 through 8. But I want you to know that the, the, the theme of this psalm is man's redemption. And we see that in verses 1 and 2. Look at that with me. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity. Though that is the value of being redeemed. Transgression is to, is to go against, to rebel against God's law. But in Christ, that transgression is forgiven. Sin is falling short of God's glory. But God has promised that in Christ, the sins, all of the sins are covered. 
and iniquity is that rebellion against God. <clears throat> but because of Christ, blessed is the man, blessed is the woman against whom the Lord counts no iniquity. So this psalm is dealing with our redemption, our being bought back from, a, from a, a life, a sinful life, where our destiny is hell, but God brought us back to redeem us. Now I want you to turn to your attention to verses 6 through 8. In light of that redemption, I want you to see a couple things here in verse 6. Therefore, let everyone who is godly offer prayer to you. Speaking of God, offer prayer to God at a time when you, O oh God, may be found. Now there's several things here that I want to bring out. There is access to God. That's the beauty of this psalm. Is that there is access to God through our prayers. And it's interesting that it says when he may be found. When can we find God? Do we ever have a problem finding God? No. Whenever we go to him in prayer he is there and he is listening. Sometimes it feels like he is not listening but he is. He is there. And then it says here, where he may be found, surely in the rush of great waters. What that is talking about is the adversity of life. There's nothing more obvious that the, with, with the adversity of life that drives us to the Lord. We go to him. We need him in those, those tough times. And you know what the Lord does? The psalmist said, David says here, they shall not reach him. The great waters, the adversity shall not overwhelm him, if you will. You see, God is one who brings us above the fray. And you know what? That is what happens in regards to moms. They help us in times of adversity whether we're very young or whether we're adults, oftentimes we will go to mom. So I often, you know, you think about, you know, the, all the sports, you know, football and things like that. What do the football players and all the sports players, who do they honor most of all? It's moms. <laughs> it's moms. Because moms brings us through the trials and the tribulations of life. She's there to help in that time of need. When I was young, I lived out in the countryside, and most of you can relate to this, and because you live out in the countryside, you don't often have friends around, you know, you can just go to. So uh, I learned early on to play well by myself. <laughs> and uh, I remember this particular day, I wanted to play baseball. So out in the field, I got four rocks, and I put home base, first, second, third, and I had my bat and ball, and I'd throw it up in the air, and I would hit it. And it would go out in the field, and I'm imagining in my mind this crowd of people just clapping and wooing and, and all of that, and, and just so much excitement, and I run to first base, and then I run to second base, and I run to third base, and I'm thinking in my mind, the outfield is about ready to throw the ball into home base, so I'm running for all I'm worth for home base, and I slide into home base, and I hit the rock with my knee and cut it wide open. What's the, yeah, the rock, <laughs> no, my knee, Daryl. <laughs> I wish the rock. What's the first thing I did? I ran up to the house, up the stairs, crying, and there was my mom. And she took me and put me on her knee, and she comforted me, she cleaned up the room, and uh, she took care of me. What a wonderful picture of what moms do when we really, really need them. And as we look through here, we will see the wonderful things that mom, moms do and draw that out from the things that the Lord does for us. Look at verse 7 with me. I'm going to read verse 7 and 8 to you. The psalmist says, you are a hiding place for me. 
You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance, Selah. That means to think and meditate on. And then in verse 8 says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. That is your knowledge. And you know what? That is mine too. What is said in verse 7 comes out of David's personal experiences in life. And if you remember David's personal experiences, they were very, very tough at times. And he begins by saying, you are a hiding place for me. That's how he saw God. You are a hiding place for me. A hiding place is where one goes when frightened. Where, where one goes when they are unsure. A hiding place is considered a place of safety. A safety zone, if you will. So in the same way David considered God to be his safety zone, what does a child do when he needs a hiding place? He goes to mom. You see, moms are their children's safety zone. A child naturally recognizes mom's comfort and protectiveness. And we saw that with our children here today and the things that they said about mom. A dad might, might do the same, but, uh, but unlike mom. Because a dad will be more like, suck it up, kid, just go back and play, or something like that. But the mom, she shares her heart and she comforts the child. So a mom is like a safety zone to her children. Then David went on to say, you preserve me from trouble. You preserve me from trouble. What kind of trouble does God preserve us from? He preserves us from troubles without, but he also preserves us from the troubles that we can get ourselves into. We can get ourselves into a peck of trouble sometimes. David sure did. Some of the things he did, it's amazing, but God was always there to help and to get him out of trouble. There were consequences, but he brought, them, he brought David out of trouble. Sometimes we can be our worst enemies and, our, and bring our own undoing. At times, uh, David found that in his life, it was God who would preserve him. It's almost like God in his manifold wisdom knows that he needs to be our control officer sometimes. You know what a control officer does? A control officer is one who is there to try to keep you out of trouble. He acts in order to keep someone from doing worse harm to themselves. That's how I see moms. Moms are their children's control officer. You ever hear a mom that might say, now Johnny, stop running with that stick. You're gonna poke your eye out. See, they're trying to keep the child from getting hurt. Now I've gotta tell you a little bit of story, and when I tell you this story, I'm gonna ask you, please don't judge me, okay? Please don't judge me. Not long ago, back in March, first day of spring, it was actually a nice warm day. And, and uh, Nicole and Mom were going to go out and do some shopping. And I uh, thought it was a good day to take the Christmas decorations, the lights off from the house. So Nicole and Mom take off to go shopping. I go out, I get the ladder, and I'm getting ready to take the the uh, Christmas lights off. Well, I want Michael to help me out. So I said, Michael, you want to go up the ladder and get the lights off? And so he did. He, he wanted to. And so he went up, and it was a little bit sheepish at first. You know, you just kind of have to get used to that height. And then he got a few off, and then we moved the ladder, and then he went up and got another one. He was getting so good at it, he would actually lean out to get more lights off. As we're coming around the house, we get almost to the back side, and, and Michael says, Grandpa, can I get up on the roof? And I said, no, no, you cannot get on the roof. But as we go around, I get to the back side of the house where the, where the edges of the roof come together, and it's a very easy, it's relatively low to the ground, where you can get on the roof very easily. 
So I says, Michael, I'll tell you what, I'll let you get up on the roof. I figured I'd be in trouble at that point. But uh, the control officers were not there at that time. <laughs> <laughs> so I helped him up. He went up. I, I, I followed him. He got on the roof, and he was a natural. Actually, he had Vivian go up. And because she wanted to get up there, she's not a, sorry about this, but she was not a natural. She was a little bit nervous about it, so we kept her on the ground. But Michael, he was very comfortable. I said, you stay over in this area. Can I look over the peak? I said, you can look over the peak, but don't get on the peak. You stay on this side, don't go to the edge. Once in a while, I would see him starting to go to the edge, but I was there watching him. I said, go back, sit down, you stay where it's safe. Well, a period of time, he got very used to it. He took his shirt off. It was a nice day. And uh, I kept my eye on him. But there was a point I had to go into the garage to get some. I had to go into the, uh, into the barn. And so I looked, make sure he was OK. I went in to get, a, get something. All of a sudden, the control officers came forward. I come out of the barn. And I see mom and grandma say, what are you doing up there on the roof? <laughs> well, I tell you what, praise God for control officers. Praise God for you moms because you are there to be protected. Us dads, we say, hey, he needs to become a man. We need to, he needs to stretch it a little bit and, and, uh, and do these kind of things so he can get used to it. But uh, he did not get in trouble. Grandpa. <laughs> but praise God that we have our control officers. Mom, you do a great job. David then adds a third statement about God. He says, you surround me with shouts of deliverance. He is our Savior. He is our deliverer. But, but shouts of deliverance speaks to God's fidelity and loyal support. He is always there for us, and so is a mom. In essence, God is our greatest supporter. God is our greatest advocate. So just as we find God to be our greatest advocate, it can also be said of moms. Moms are their children's greatest advocate. Both parents want, to, want their children to do well. So they encourage and motivate their children. But moms seem to take that responsibility more to heart. Moms will be there during the times of their children's achievements. They will be during, there during the times when they have to pick up the, the, the pieces of a broken confidence uh, because they have failed at something. They will be there to comfort during that time. But also, we will see as we move now to verse 8. Let me read verse 8 again. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. I want you to note that in verse 7, it was from David's perspective. You, God, you, you, you are doing this for me. In <laughs> verse 8, it's God saying, I will do this for you. And he begins by saying, I will instruct you. David's transition from God's personal of watch care over to God's direct guidance where, when God says, I will instruct you. So just as God instructs us, and how does he instruct us? He instructs us through his word. We need each of us to spend time in his word and to meditate on it and to apply it. But you know what? Moms are great instructors too. Moms are their children's instructor. Moms excel as instructors because they are very good at explaining then providing a rationale for doing what they want to do. Dads will typically be more dictatorial. They'll say, do it this way. And when the child says, why? Then you say, because I said so. Now I've seen moms that will say that too, because I said so. But there comes a time when they just will take the time to instruct them. Moms are wonderful, wonderful instructors. Then moving on to another aspect of guidance, God said uh, to David, I will teach you in the way you should go. Very important what God says there. I will teach you the way you should go. You know what? Moms are their children's teacher as well. And probably, and I say to some extent, 
extends to our own uh, failure sometimes as men, is that they will be a better teacher about spiritual things than us men will be. Now, moms spend a lot of time in teaching. A mom is more likely to help a child with homework or finish a project or something like that. The most obvious demonstration of a mother's manifold wisdom is reflected in their children's spiritual well-being and growth. We live in a, a time and a culture where increasingly, our church is very good here, and I want to commend you men, but increasingly men do not go to the church with the family. They, they are not there. And you know what? It, this is uh, statistics prove this, that when a father and a mother take their children to church, the children, when they grow into adults, will, more, will be more likely to go to church. Quite often, sadly, the moms, when the husband doesn't go, the moms will be the one that will take their children to church. And then when the children become adults, what happens oftentimes is the children go the way of dad and they have nothing else to do with church. Statistically, that's what happens. Moms, I commend you for being there and I know that there are moms in our congregation that wish it were different. But that's the way it is. So men, let us encourage other men to be faithful in going to church. Our families need that. Our families need both parents there in the church. But moms are great teachers. And moms are there to make sure that they're doing okay uh, from a, uh, from a uh, physical standpoint, but also from a spiritual standpoint. As well. And then lastly, verse 8, the final aspect of God's manifold wisdom to David was, I will counsel you with my eyes upon you. Uh, this, too, expresses the manifold wisdom of mom, because moms are their children's counselor. Moms are ready to offer insight from the heart, from life's experiences, uh, to their children, especially when their children reach adulthood. More, it's more of a teacher when they're younger, more of a counselor when the children are older in years. And that wonderful counsel that moms give to their adult children is priceless. The, uh, it's interesting to me what, what God says here in verse 8, I will counsel you with my eyes upon you. Boy, is that descriptive of moms. <clears throat> they will keep their eyes upon their children, no matter what the age is, to see how they're doing. And I don't know if it's a process physiologically that happens uh, during uh, the pregnancy, but I'm always wondering that at some point during that pregnancy, uh, a mom begins to grow eyes in the back of their head. <laughs> and they know, they, their back can be to what the kids are doing, and they will see everything. It's amazing. His eye, God's eyes upon you, and a mom's eye is upon you as well, because that is a mom's heart. So the manifold wisdom revealed by God in this passage can also be said of moms as well. Take with, take with you to, uh, uh, turn to Ephesians chapter 3. This is the passage that actually brings out about the manifold wisdom of God. I'm not going to take the time to read the whole passage. I'm going to read, uh, I'm going to pick it up at verse 9 and look down to verse 10. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 9 through 10. To bring to light for everyone what is the plan of the mystery hidden for the ages in God, who created all things, so that through the church, listen to that, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God. The church is the bride of Christ, right? So that through the church, the manifold wisdom 
of God, the abundant, the diverse wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers, the authorities, in the heavenly places. Miles truly reflect so many aspects within the manifold wisdom of God. In the New Testament, it is the church that displays God's manifold wisdom to the world. In the home, it appears, you know, dads are not leaving you out because there are great aspects to, to us dads as well in, in Bible. But we're talking about moms today. In the home, there is nothing more comforting for a child than a mom that displays God's manifold wisdom in Christ to her children. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just, again, we thank you so much for motherhood. We wouldn't be here without them. And we praise you for their faithfulness to their children, to their families. We thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, I'm going to invite our candidates for baptism to come up. So, Diane, come on up, Brianna, and Elijah. How many of you were nervous when you were preparing to be baptized? Yeah. <laughs> Show up here. You are in good company. You are in good company. Follow me over here. Brian, you going to take over with some songs?
testing? There we go. Okay. I kind of like to share a, a scripture verse from Romans. It has nothing to do with water baptism. It actually speaks about the spiritual baptism. At the moment that we've trusted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are baptized into the body of Christ. And we become a, you know, a part of the church. But what I love about this passage, speaking about spiritual baptism, is that it gives a wonderful picture of water baptism. And so let me read it to you. It comes from Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through, I think, 4. Yes, 1 through 4. Paul says, what shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? And I love what the King James Version here says. It says, God forbid. How can we who died to sin still live any longer in it? How do we die to sin? By trusting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior who takes away our sin, who redeems us. Verse 3, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? And that is what believers' baptism pictures with, by the immersion. By going underneath the water, you are picturing his death and burial. And then it goes on to say, we were buried Therefore, with him, by baptism into death, in order just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. What a joyful uh, description about the Christian life, the newness of life. And so baptism pictures that death, burial, and coming up out of the water, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So with that, I'm going to ask for Diana to come down into the water. Diana, come up on this little board here. Okay. Yeah. Now I'm just going to ask just a couple questions. Uh, you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And are you ready to be baptized? Okay, she has been looking forward to this. Praise God. Amen. Praise God for that. Yeah. I'm going to shout out the rest. Diana, you don't have to bend down or anything. <laughs> put you down under. <laughs> rest in my hands. I won't keep you down under. <laughs> Diana, by the power invested in me as pastor of Elkin Baptist Church, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Buried in the likeness of his death, raised in the likeness of his life.
by the power invested in me as pastor of Belton Baptist Church, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, I baptize you in the likeness of his death, raised in the likeness of his life. Amen. Amen.
exciting aspects of church life. Not only to see someone come to Christ as Lord and Savior, but to go forward in obedience and in baptism, believer's baptism. Uh, I just thank the Lord for Diana and Brianna and uh, Elijah going forward in obedience today. I'm going to ask for the whole family to come up. Uh, we came out into the foyer before we all came in together, and Amanda was out there crying. <laughs> she is so uh, happy. And just those are tears of joy, aren't they, Amanda? Yes. So have your family come on up. Diana, please come on up. The whole family. What we will do is uh, I will give the uh, certificate of baptism uh, to our, well, we're not candidates anymore, but to our baptized. <laughs> Believers. Diana, we thank the Lord for you, and we pray for your continued growth in your walk with Christ. Brianna, our prayer is the same for you. Uh, Lord, as, uh, as you live your life, I'm going to ask everyone to stand as I give the benediction, and I'm going to ask for the whole Hackett family and Diana to come out with me, and please uh, and congratulate them and encourage them in their walk with the Lord. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Moms, we thank you for serving the Lord and living for him. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Go in the strength of the Lord. Come on up. No matter what, you know, like there's like some alternative side. Somehow, let's just go. I thought we did earlier.